up? It's Christine Horn, and this is Actors Daily Bread, episode 165. Today I'm talking about what I learned from my first Disney show. So stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. I'm so excited. What's up? Happy Monday. <sighs> it's been a busy weekend. I've been traveling so much. I was just in, I was in Oregon recently, and then I was in Atlanta for the past week. And while I was gone, I found out, let me see how I want to do this. I found out my episode of a show I was on aired last week. Um, it's, it was called, the show is called Sydney to the Max. And it's a Disney show. And it was my first time doing a Disney show. And I promised my Hollywood bound audience, Hollywood bound actors that I would share what I learned during that uh, show. So that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, if this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, I want to welcome you to all my replay watchers who will watch this later. What's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. So if you're new to me, I'm Christine Horn. I'm an actress of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. And I really love doing Actors Daily Bread because this is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. Again, this is episode 165. So if you've missed anything and you want to catch up, just, you know, click my name and just binge, honey, just binge. But I want to talk about this Disney show for a second. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Benzel. Um, so I have been, wait, can y'all even hear me? I turned my speaker off. Can y'all hear me? My speaker, my speaker was off. Vanzel was on first. He would have told me if he could hear me. It's weird. I have this thing. I have the computer things plugged in. Trafina, what's up, Trafina? Part of my Bookie Magnet Academy. I reviewed your tape um, in our uh, Q&A call that just happened. So be sure to catch the replay on that. Um, all right. So let's get into it. So my first Disney show. Of course, I do a ton of television. Um, just check my INDB credits. I think we're up to 53 and counting now. So yes, praise God. And But this was my first Disney show, not my first comedy. And I want to really make a, 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 I can't think of the word. It's been a long day, a lot of talking. I just want to tell you the difference, okay? <laughs> um, so, you know, there's a difference when we are acting for uh primetime television, like procedurals uh, versus uh, single cam versus multicam, like all that is different, right? But Disney, like doing a kid's show is like a mix. It's that multicam vibe, but it's a slight difference because it's still a little elevated because it's for children. And it was my first one, and I was so excited to, to book this show. Again, if you're just joining, I was just on Sydney to the Max. It came out on Disney last Tuesday, I believe, the episode is called Mo Grandma's Mo Problems. And I want to share with you the top four things that I learned from working on the show so that you can just put it in your file cabinet for when you have an audition for a Disney show. And I totally believe that this will be applicable to my kid actors out there and my grownups. Um, so let me just say this. Um, I was really blown away by the talent of these kids that were on set. And they were adults too. But for this show specifically, hey, Gloria, hey, Wendy. Um, the amount of copy script that these kids had to memorize, number one, blew my mind. And like, not only just like being off book, but like being flexible, which is one of the first things I want to talk about. The flexibility that is needed on a sitcom period is essential. And here's why. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. You know, if you're, if you're someone who struggles to memorize scripts, I want you to really do whatever you can to work on this as much as possible because kids don't get a pass on this either. The reason being, you need to be really good at memorizing because e between each take, the producer, director, writers will come up to you and potentially give you a new line to say for the next take, not like tomorrow, like cut, uh, Hey, heaven. Hey, Tanika, I'm going to talk, use heaven. Hey, heaven, uh, next, time, next time I want you to say, Johnny went to the store. I hope he didn't come back with that, right? And then they're like, action. Johnny went to the store. I hope he didn't come back with that. And they'll be like, cut. Great. 
heaven next time um this next time i want you to say johnny went to the store with michelle i hope she didn't come back with that what action johnny went to the store with i forgot what the line was i forgot what the line was because i'm making it up my point is the flexibility and not being locked in, I say this one line one way, or this is how I'm gonna do it the entire time, that has to go out the window. I'm always talking about being present, but for comedy specifically, and not just Disney shows, but multicam especially, they will come to you with a different line each time if, the, if they feel like the punchline isn't working, or just if they just want options. Not because anything's wrong with it. They just want options so that when they go to edit it, they can play around with some things. Which leads me to my next point. Jasmine, don't laugh at me. I, I'm making it up. Had someone given me the line and I was writing it down, I would have remembered. But I'm making my point um, that there's very little time for you to absorb it. They just spit it out and then it's action. You don't have time to be like, oh, what was that line again? Which leads me to the next tip. This is what I really did not know because, yeah, I didn't know this. And I should have known this when I worked on Mom, the sitcom Mom, but it wasn't as stressed. When I was on set for this show, for this comedy, scripts in hand was, was, uh, was mandatory. So, in you know, I was like, oh, I'm off book. I got my lines. I'm good, right? And they were trying to rehearse. And I show up to the set. And I noticed the producer said it kind of chill, like script in hand, script in hand. And I was like, what are you talking about? We're script in hand. And I was realized he was trying to tell me, and then he just flat out said, Christine, we all keep our scripts in our hands. The script never comes out of your hand until it's time to shoot with the, with the studio audience. Powerful. So here I was trying to show that I was <laughs> rats. I got my lines. I don't know about them. And they were like, no, we keep our script. Why? It goes back to tip one, the flexibility, the lines changing, every take, possibly, a tweak of a word here or there. We need you to be like, A, the script in hand says, hey, this isn't a final performance, number one, which is what I'm always talking about when we're doing stuff in the room with auditions. You never not have your scripts. Even if you're off book, you always have your script because what if they say, let's start at the top of page three and you're like, uh, what's at the top of page three? So script in hand and he, it was mandatory. So even the stars of the show, everybody always had their script and their pen. And so it may feel weird. Like I'm just, how come I be free? You just have to learn because you're like, Johnny went to the store. I hope we didn't go with that. Ha ha ha. Right. You do your whole thing with the script in your hand and you're constantly turning pages as you, as if you're just at a, you know, at a rehearsal. They want to keep the fun and the flexibility so that you don't get so locked into that. That was huge for me. Again, kids and adults, it did not matter. Every single person on that set, down to producers, script supervisors, uh, writers, directors, everybody had their script. And I was just really amazed, again, at the kids who were given new lines back to back to back to back. And they delivered them with ease. And if they didn't understand, this is, you know, another tip, just ask to be, for it to be repeated. When they give you a new line, they're like, Johnny went to the store with Angela. What? Johnny went, okay, what's the line again? You make a quick note in your scripts, now you have it. You don't want to have to ask for it five times because, oh, I got it, I got it. No, write it down. That's why they want you to have the script in your hand. If you're just joining us, welcome to Actors Daily Bread. This is episode 165. We're talking about what I learned from my first Disney show, Sydney to the Max, an amazing show. I had so much fun with the cast and crew, and I'm sharing with you what I learned, and this is applicable to all ages, okay? My third tip that I took away was pace. I talked about this tonight. Shout out to all the members of my Booking Magnet Academy. We always have two hot seat coaching calls, and tonight we had one, and I actually showed my footage and let my uh, students see the pace that I did. What I mean by pace is just choosing where I would speed up, slow down, where my joke would land, where my button would land, really giving myself this. Um, Wendy says, is this mandatory for all TV series? No, script in hand is for comedy. That's my point. You don't want to do that on, you know, that's the thing when I, I'm used to doing drama and, and you know, procedurals, you, you, you know. <laughs> and also with comedies, you're rehearsing. That's okay, I'll add a fifth tip. Let me save that, I'll come back to it. I'll put the rehearsal schedule. 
I already knew about this, but you may not. I'll come to that. So I don't want to lose my, my point. Pace was my third tip. So first tip was being flexible because the lines can and will change often. Two, script in hand is mandatory, not a suggestion for comedies, okay? Uh, for multicam and specifically Disney shows, okay? So uh, tip number three was pace. Needing to make sure you have pace and flow so that your jokes land. You cannot be monotone, you can't be here. You gotta have, what did he say? What did he do? Oh no, he didn't. Has to be, has to have that flow. And I learned so much of this by watching the kids. Like, I was in class watching these kids. I really, I, it was really wonderful. And it was really wonderful watching these kids because they didn't have as much pressure on themselves as we do as adults. They were just able to be in flow. They struggle with their lines. They'd have fun. They'd be laughing, which leads me to my tip number four, which is focus. Focus. Now, I am a professional, consummate professional. But listen, you got to prepare yourself for these Disney shows and these kids shows because there is all kinds of silly shenanigans happening. In the particular scene I'm in, on, I'm again, I'm talking about Sydney to the Max. I was just on it last week. It's a funny scene where the kids are trying to throw a makeup party, like kind of like a Mary Kay party, right? But they don't know what they're doing. They're putting lipstick on. It's a hot mess. They made this lady look like a clown. It is hilarious. And I... And as what well, it was, we all at one take busted out laughing because the first time they actually did the makeup on her, she looked like a clown caught in the rain, which is what she said in the script. And none of us could hold it together. Now that was only none of us got in trouble, right? It was like, okay, we all got that laughter out. But what I found for myself takes two and three, I was almost about to laugh. And I had to come up with a plan, a sight line, somewhere else I could look besides this lady's face because if I looked at her, I was going to laugh. And there's a studio audience in front of you. With a multicam show, you have not only the pressure of a camera, of cameras, but people. Breaking character is not an option. So I had to figure out how to get extreme focus, how to look somewhere else, how to pretend I was looking at her, but actually looking past her, do whatever I could so that I could get through the tape because all I wanted to do was laugh. And then you got these kids who life is just jovial, right? And they're looking at you like, you going to laugh? Then they became like, they tried to make me laugh. And I was like, no, you are not going to get me fired. That's what you're not going to do. <laughs> So your focus has to be on point. I don't care what else is happening around you. If everybody else is laughing, do your best. Because at the end of the day, that's your take you're messing up. My fifth and final tip, and I, let me give me some comments in the, in the chat box. Let me know if you're finding these tips helpful. These are my real experiences, what I really learned. And if you're watching a replay, I want to hear from you too. Are you finding this helpful? And this is very helpful for, again, not just Disney, but multicam in general. Okay, anything with a live studio audience. This changes the game, guys. My final tip is the rehearsal schedule. Again, I knew this, but some of you may not know. With uh, multicam shows, with, uh, with live studio audiences, you show up, your week is at five days. So you show up to rehearse every single day. But it's not like doing a um, regular television show where you have like 12 hour days. You may only be there for two hours. You may only be there you come in to do your scene, you might be gone in an hour. Like it is the sweetest schedule ever. And then you have your show day where you do it that, sh that day or that night. Usually the filming is in the evening. But you basically show up every day just to run through. You run through the whole 30 minutes. Everybody, you know, since you're in a studio audience, you start at one set and everybody moves to the next. And then everybody moves to the next. Everybody moves to the next. As a whole collective, every cast, every crew member. And then you go home. It really is sweet. And it's, if anybody has done theater, I love to share, and this is what made me feel good, multicam sitcoms are the closest thing to theater. So for those of, you looking to make, those of you looking to make your transition, this is where all the rules, pretty much uh, most of the rules go away, where we're trying to be super subtle and we're kind of whispering and being intimate with the camera. Multicam has you framed from you know mid belly or lower up so you can't be so subtle it has to be bigger as if it's in theater now you're not working a 1200 seat house but it is 
elevated. And then when it's Disney or kids show, it's elevated even a little more. Have any of you ever watched That's So Raven or any of those shows? It has to be a little elevated because the audience is kids. So that's important for you to know. This is not the time to be super grounded because that's not how the show is written. So these are the five tips, and I really pray that you're taking note. You may not need them right now, but these really helped me get through the show, clearly helped me get the job. But there were a few things that I learned that I really took away. So to review, number one was that you have to be flexible because the lines change. Number two was a script in your hand at all times. Even until you have a studio audience, so it's go time, your script never leaves your hand while you're on set. Number three is pace. Make sure you find that pace. All my students in the Booking Magnet Academy, if you haven't done that pace exercise, this is why I'm telling you to do it. You gotta practice it. And number four, being focused, not breaking character because it's so easy to wanna do it. And number five is that the rehearsal schedule is really, really sweet. Really, 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 really sweet. If you found this information helpful today, um, Please leave a comment and let me know. But also, this is the kind of stuff I'm teaching at the booking in the at the Bronze Lens Film Festival this August, August 24th. We have a special discount code just for my Hollywood Bound Actors community. The link is above or below. I would love for you to join me. But this is the stuff no one taught me. <laughs> College ain't teaching you this, right? Um, the average person isn't teaching you this. So I'm teaching you everything that I just learned. Um, from working on this Disney show and you can translate this to other sitcoms and like also if you're working for like um, for some people who may be some shows that are a bit more um, not as grounded you know I'm, I'm not gonna be specific about that but some television shows are not all grounded some of them are a bit more elevated and this is very helpful so let me just check the comments um, and again every tip I gave is for the kids and the adults because it's a lot of kids in these Disney shows and on these kids shows, and this is essential for you to know. I remember when I first moved back to LA, I had an audition for That's So Raven, and the, the, the casting director was just trying to get something from me. I just wasn't getting it. I was so rooted and grounded, mm, intimate camera. I was not doing what that medium required. Television is not created equal, period. You have to know what you're auditioning for. Um, Awesome. Just checking the comments. Jasmine says, this is awesome. Thank you, Venzel. Glad you loved it. Wendy says, I'm being fed. Wonderful. Hi, TC. Um, wonderful. All right. So those are my five tips. If you missed any part of this, please watch the replay. Just rewind. Again, this is Actors Daily Bread. If you're like, whoa, where have I been? Where are these videos? There's over... <laughs> There's so many, just go binge. Just click my name and binge, go to YouTube and binge and enjoy. Have an amazing night, I will see you next time. Bye.